Scientists, welcome to our program for Science 3rd Prep Stage. Today, we have an important unit. The starting lesson of this unit is mirrors. And we have another one that called lenses. Let's go to see our lesson today about the mirror, the meaning of the mirror, uses of our mirrors in our life. Let's go to see our lesson today and concentrate with me very well. Let's go. Unit 2, Lesson 1, we will talk about mirrors. What's meant by mirrors and what the uses of our mirrors in our life. First, we have light. What's meant by light? It is an external factor. It is a type of energy that comes out from my body. It is an external factor. The meaning of external factor, it means what? It means it is a type of energy that comes out from my body, from the source of light, like the sun, like lamp, like any type of source of the light. So this external factor that affects eyes, causing vision sense. This is the definition of light. It's very important to know the definitions in this unit. Why? Because it is a very important definition in our exam. And you know the type of light. You know the definition of light. So here, in last time, we have light. It is an external factor that affects eyes, causing vision sense. After that, we have what we have, nature of light waves. What's meant by nature of light waves? What are the light waves? Number one, we have light is an electromagnetic waves. It is a type of waves that found in our life that called electromagnetic waves. The meaning here of electromagnetic, it means it comes out from two types of waves, magnetic waves and electro waves. Then we have what? We have electricity or electric energy and we have magnetic energy that comes out together to make what? To make the type of waves here of light. So the light it is an electromagnetic waves. And we study these electromagnetic waves in last years in primary stage. So here we have number two, we have it moves in straight line. Electromagnetic waves or light waves that moves in, move in what? Move in straight lines. After that, we have number three. Light rays may be what? May be parallel. What's meant by parallel? Parallel to each other that produced from the source of the light here. Like what? Like the sun. So here we have the sun here that makes what? That makes this parallel light rays. And the second one we have what? We have diverging light rays. Diverging light ray that comes out from what? From the lamp. So here we have diverging light rays that comes out from the lamp in our house. And we have the parallel light rays that produced by what? By the sun or stars or any type of a star in the sky. So here it's very important to know the types of what? Of the light rays. Light rays again may be what? May be parallel or diverging light rays. After that we have what? We have converging light rays. What's meant by converging light rays? Converging it means what? It means collecting light rays such as the rays collected by the convex lens. And we will talk about the convex lens in the second lesson here in our unit. So here we have what we have, the convex lens in this picture. We have the collection and converging light rays parallel that comes out from the sun. It comes out from any source of the light. So we have this type of convex lens or the convex lens that makes what? Makes collection of these light rays or converge converging in light rays in a point called focal, focal point or it called focus. And we will talk about this point after a period of time. So here we have the are the types of what? The types of light rays that found in our light. Now we have the properties of light waves. What are the properties of light waves? Number one, we have reflection of light rays. What's meant by reflection? A piece or a piece of glass or a lens, a type of lens. We have many types of lens that we talk about it after a period of time. 
So here we have what we have, the refraction of light rays and we have reflection of light rays and they are big difference between them. After that, so we have what we have, the reflection of light rays. Concentrate with me very, very well in this activity. If you know the reflection of light rays, we make this activity to know what, to know the reflection. How does the reflection happen and what are the result of this reflection? First, we have what we have, a reflecting surface and we draw this normal line. This reflecting surface, it's maybe what? Maybe a mirror or a metal surface. And after that, we have the lamp. And this lamp that produce what? Produce a light ray. This light ray that called what? Called incident ray. What's meant by incident ray? This incident ray, it means what? It means what the light ray that produced or that, that produced from the lamp. And what? and that fall down on the reflecting surface. So the reflecting surface here, it is what? It is a mirror or a metal surface, just these two surfaces. And after that, we have a reflection or a reflecting gray that we see by naked eye. So here we have the reflecting gray here. Here in this shape, again, we have a reflecting surface that's mirror or a metal surface. And we have the normal line. It's very important to draw this normal line Okay, to make what? To make the reflection or to know the reflection of light rays in this activity. And we have the incident ray. Incident ray here, it comes out from the source of light ray. Like what? Like the lamp, like sun, like anything of this. And we have this incident ray, the falling down ray of the lamp that fall down on the reflecting surface, like the mirror or metal surface. And we have the reflecting ray. Reflecting ray, it means what? It means the light ray that, that move again in the same type or the same place of what? Of the incident ray that we can see by naked eye to make what? To make the reflection of light rays. And after that, we have an angle between what? Between the incident light ray and normal line. This is the importance of normal line here. To know what? To know the incident angle. And we have the other one, we have another angle between the reflecting gray and what and the normal line. So here we have the reflecting angle and we have incident angle. So here we have what we have, this is the shape of what of the activity of reflecting of light rays and it is very, very important to you to study it very well. What is the conclusion here? What do you understand from this? We have the first thing and the very important thing in this activity, two laws of light reflection. Two laws of light reflection, it means what? It means we have two laws or two rules that makes what? That control this light reflection. So here the first law is what it is. An angle of reflection equal an angle of incidence. Again, we have the first law, concentrate with me very, very well. First law, the angle of reflection, it's equal the angle of incidence or the angle of incidence equal the angle of reflection, the same thing. Like this. Here in this shape, we have what? We have the incident angle that found between what? Between the incident light ray and normal line. And we have the reflecting angle that found between the reflecting light ray and normal line, it must be equal each other. Why? Because we have the reflecting here, it is like the ball that reflect on the floor or the ball of tennis ball that reflect on what or that hit the surface of the wall and move again to my face. Why? Because here we have this angle equal each other. Why? Because we have here the first law of reflection of light rays. That's what, that's the incident angle equal the reflecting angle. Or the angle of incidence equal the angle of reflection. For example, if I have the first one or the first angle is what is 40 degrees. The second one is 40 degrees. If I have another one, 30 degrees, the reflecting angle. And the other one, it must be 30 degrees and so on. 
So here we have what we have, the first law of reflection. First law of reflection, again, we have the two laws, the first law of this one, the angle of reflection equal the angle of incidence. Another one, or the angle of incidence. What's meant by angle of incidence? It's the angle that found between the normal line and incident light ray. Again, it's very important to know the definitions here. Angle of incidence, it's the angle between the normal line and the incident light rays. And the second one, we have the angle of reflection. It's the angle between the normal line and what? And the reflecting light rays. So we have the second law of, of what? Of light reflection, right? right. So here we have the second law. It's the incident light ray. Concentrate with me very well. We have the incident light ray, reflecting light ray, and the normal line, all of them that exist in, are existing in a plane perpendicular on what? On the reflecting surface. Again, we have incident light ray, reflecting light ray, and normal line, all of them are existing in that plane or a plane that per this plane is perpendicular on the reflecting surface. What is the reflecting surface? We say before the mirror or metal surface. So here we have this rays and normal line. They are found on the reflecting surface. It's in form of perpendicular line or perpendicular, perpendicular plane. So here the second law of reflection. Here we have what? We have a part of this instrument that called what? That called the Hartle instrument. So this Hartle instrument that we use it to make or to make these activities about what? About the reflection of light rays. Here we have a piece of the plane mirror that found in the middle of this one on the equator of this instrument here. So we have what? We can see what? We can see two lines. What are the two lines here? Two laser rays. This is light rays or represent the light rays. If you have here the type of this light ray, one of them, that's what? That's incident light ray. And we have the other one is reflecting light ray after falling down on this piece of mirror. Why? Because we have reflection of light rays. It's one of the properties of light. So here we have what? We have the light rays here. Concentrate with me here. We have what? We have the two angles, angle of incidence and angle of reflection. The first one, angle of incidence, it means what? It means the angle between the incident light ray and normal line between or perpendicular line on the plane mirror here. So we have the two angles that appear to us very well. So the other one is reflecting angle that has what? That has the same degree or the same, the same number of what of this angle. Here, if I have, for example, the first one on left hand, we have 50 degrees that found here in this, this part of an instrument. We have 50 degrees and the other side we have the same number, 50 degrees. Why? Because we have the reflecting surface or we have the reflecting angle equal incident angle here. So the angle of incidence equal the angle of what? Angle of reflection. If you make some kind of change or change this type of reflection and we have the degree that will be, will be changing. Why? Because it must be equal each other as we see here. We have what? We have this one about 30 and the other one is 30. If you have another one that's about 20, the other one is 20 and so on. So here we have what? We have this is the instrument that represent what represent the types of reflection of light rays by using what? By using the plane mirror or a piece of the plane mirror. So here we have what? We have no reflection here in this case because we have what? We have no falling down here because we have no falling down. On what? On the reflecting surface. By what? By the source of light ray or the light ray of this experiment.
here we have what we have a picture okay that's important shape okay to you that represents what represent the reflection of light rays by a plane mirror we have a plane mirror here and we have the incident light ray and we have another one the reflected light ray we have here the normal line that's represented by n or normal okay so we have here the two types of angles the angle of incidence and angle of reflection so here we have the angle of incidence it means what it means the angle between incident light ray and normal line the accurate angle between them and we have the angle of reflection it means what it means the angle between the normal line and reflected light ray it's very important to know these labels here and we have another exercise we have the first exercise here like this what is this exercise what are the labels for this reflection ray diagram so here we have what we have many things here we have two lines one of them that's arrow that fall down from up to down and the other one that comes out from down to up and we have what we have some words and we put it in each part of these question marks here in these squares of question mark we do this we take the first one angle of incidence angle of incidence here it means what which part of this i move it like this okay angle of incidence which one which one yes angle of incidence here yes here okay very good and we have the mirror here the mirror which part of this shape that represent the mirror here we have what this one maybe so here we have reflected light ray reflected light ray which which one of them reflected that move from up to down no 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 it is wrong we have what we have reflected light ray that move from down to up yes very good so we have the angle of reflection which one of them we have here the angle of incidence and the other one it must be the angle of reflection so here we have the incident light ray incident light ray which one we have the other one we have reflected ray so here we have the incident light ray and the last one we have normal okay this normal it's found like this here so if you know if you do that these labels okay and we may know the correction if you know the correction like this it is very very good well done so here we have what we have here reflected light ray and we have the angle of reflection and we have the normal line and after that we have the angle of incidence and the incident ray and the mirror mirror we can represent and draw the mirror like this okay by what by line and we have some parallel lines in what or shaded lines be below this one so here we have what we have this is what this is the diagram that we know it very well because it's very important and one of the figures that comes out in your exam in the term after that we have light refraction what's meant by light refraction refraction is the change of light direction when it passes from the transparent medium to another transparent medium another transparent medium here we have a part or a piece optical piece that called lens and we will talk about lenses after the this lesson so here we have the parallel light ray that comes out from the source and we have here we have the diverging light ray it passes inside this piece yes it passes inside the glass yes but we have what we have diverging like this diverging or collection or converging any one of them that make that means what means the change of light pass like this the first part or the first side is parallel light rays and the second one diverged light rays okay that move away from this piece like this it's very clear to us now so we have what we have the optical piece or a piece of glass or a piece of lens or concave lens or convex lens any one of them that's transparent medium that comes out from the air as a transparent medium that diverge light ray or collect light ray or change the light rays to make to make what to make a refraction of light rays so here we have the refraction of light rays like this so the refraction it means what the change of the path of light rays or direction of the light ray that will be changed 
Why? Because it moves from a transparent medium like the air and through what? Through a transparent medium or another one like what? Like the glass. So here again, in last time we have what? We have the light refraction again. It is an important definition. It's the change of light direction when it passes from transparent medium like the air, like water, like glass to another transparent medium like air or water or glass again. Now, we have another exercise about this light refraction. We have this exercise or this activity. What happened when light travels from air into glass? So here we have the air in the blue color and we have a glass in light color or gray color. If I turn on like this, so we have what? We have the angle of this, of this shape or this one. Like this, we have the source of light ray. So the light ray that moves down from the air to the glass and make a change of its what? Of its direction or change of its path. If I change the angle here, or change the position here of this source that change the other one or the other light ray or refracted light ray that move inside the glass that change its path. Why? Because we have two different what? Two different types of transparent medium. We have air and we have glass. If you change like this again, okay, like this here, so here we have the angle of incidence that may be what? Maybe 75 like this and the angle of refraction equal 40. Why? Because we have change of direction of the light ray from the air inside the glass. So here we have what? We have the light refraction like this. Now we will talk about mirrors. Mirrors, it means what? It means they are optical piece that reflect light rays. So here we have mirrors, it's reflected light rays, yes reflects light rays every type of mirror or each type of mirror that make reflection of light rays we can call the mirrors as reflecting surface yes so the mirrors are classified into two main types number one we have what we have the first one that called the plane mirror and we use it every day in the morning to make us handsome why because we have it's very very important to make you handsome or beautiful like so here we have the plane mirror that we use it every day in the morning or any time or of what of the day another one we have what we have the second type spherical mirrors spherical it means the mirror that comes out from a bowl of glass so here we have a two type of what the two types of this mirror number one we have concave mirror so here we have in this picture the the girl that moved near to this mirror and it appears like what appears in very big in it is in here in her image so the boy that moved away or that found away from the mirror so it appears what appears inverted so we study this very well after that so the second one we have the convex mirror convex mirror it means what it means the mirror that we use it in our cars yes so it's what it makes the, uh, or we see the pictures inside or images inside this one as what, as small image. So here we have the spherical mirrors, a very, very important type of this mirror. We have the concave mirror and we have convex mirror. Here we have the forming or the formation of the image by plane mirror. What are the plane mirror? Plane mirror, we use it every day. And this picture, this is the person that stands on this mirror to make what? To make something. So here we have what? If you have you, real. You are a real person. And we have another one, we have the plane mirror. And this plane mirror, it makes what? It makes the reflection of light rays. Can you see anything behind the mirror? No. You cannot see anything behind the mirror. So why we see? Our image inside mirror it's like what it's like the mirror that or behind mirror but it is not behind it because the behind mirror we, we have what we have a wall but here what are the image or how does the image is that formed in the plane mirror so here we have what if I have the light ray that comes out parallel from what from 
the source and move it like this. So we have here, we have another light rays that found inside the mirror. And we have the image. Okay, But we have here, the distance between the plane mirror and you it must be equal the distance between the image inside mirror and the mirror. Again, here we have many lines. The first one at left hand, we have what? We have real, real person that move or that stand on behind the mirror or in the front of mirror. So here we have this line. It's equal the line behind mirror or inside the mirror. Yes. So here we have the distance between the real person or the body and the plane mirror equal the distance between the image of this of the same body and the mirror. So here we have what? We have the distance between the person or the body in the front of mirror equal the distance between the image and the mirror. And these light rays that appears like this in red color. So you can see your image like this. The first one that move that move parallel to what? To the light rays and the second one that makes what? That makes like this. So here we have the motion or the image that found here or that found in what? Inside the mirror, inside the plane mirror that appears like this. So here we have very important to know the forming image of the plane mirror like this. We have many questions about this part and we will talk about the questions in another episode. But we have what? We have a body and mirror and what? And the image. So if the first distance between the body and mirror equal 30 centimeter, the second one equal? Yes, very good. We have 30 centimeter. Why? Because the distance between the body and the plane mirror equal the distance between the image of the same body and the same mirror. So here we have what we have. It is a rule of the image by plane mirror. Now we have the properties of image by plane mirror. So the plane mirror here, we have a picture here that, that appears what? That appears the image inside the plane mirror. We see this. We have what we have equal the body. The first thing, the image by plane mirror equal the body. The body or the real body equal the image inside it. So we have what? We have D1 equal D2. It means what? It means the distance between the body and the distance bet between the body and mirror equal the distance between the image and the mirror. This is D1 and D2. And after that.